Alrighty, so just to mix it up a little, I'm going to do a little rant slash educational video in between all these different brochures that I'm covering for the Counter Jihad Coalition organization. So, as most people know, especially if you're following my Facebook page, if you're actually still even on it, um, I've been going at it with some of my quote-unquote friends that I thought were... Oh, fuck it. I don't care. I don't find insult you. I thought you all were intelligent and you kind of at least knew a little bit above average with most people, especially since most of you claim to either be in college or going through secondary education. actually overestimated your capacity to understand that there are certain things that just can't be stereotyped and blanketed. And I think it's really ironic, actually, because a lot of people, especially these friends of mine, or if they even are my friends anymore, because I'm talking to whoever's, you know, stubborn or who's left on my friends list that doesn't want to delete me yet. I, I think it's really hilarious how you're automatically assuming that I'm blanketing every single person who's from Middle Eastern descent or in that that sort of ethnicity from India and Indian Malaysia or whatever. You think that I'm blanketing them all to be violent jihadist Muslims. Somebody, I guess, the other day even, I tried to explain to her, because it's, it's not even that I was trying to attack her or anything, I specifically felt the need to contact my female friends and kind of, you know, I'm not gonna like throw this on them, but I'm at least like pointing it out to them so maybe if they actually give a fuck or if they're actually curious or they want to see, oh, well I wonder if she's completely full of shit or if she's onto something. The Muslim culture is totally cool with just raping random women, especially foreign women who don't cover themselves in sheets. Felt it was kind of imperative to be telling all my friends that have vaginas. And there's actually already been a couple of rape cases back, I think one in North Dakota, which I thought was funny, it was in the UK newspaper. Because the refugee came from a country where Islamic State was, was the high law, he claimed that he didn't know that it was statutory rape to have sex with a girl who was underage. They just pardoned him of his actual sentence because of his cultural ignorance. Just complete fucking bullshit. So they know enough to figure out how to use the welfare system and they made it over the Mediterranean just fine and they made it up that far and they can speak English and shit, you think that they don't understand that your culture's different? I mean, that's kind of their thing. But anyway, so, somebody tried to point out to me that, well, not all of them are like that, and like, Sikhs aren't like that, and, I'm, and I already briefly skimmed through an article about Sikhs, never had an issue with Sikhs, I've, I don't know full, like, in-depth detail about their Eastern philosophy or culture or religions, but for some reason, I don't know if it's just my attention to detail, but I could tell the difference between a Muslim, and I didn't know what they were called, I didn't know they were Sikhs, but I just thought they were little Indian Hindu people or something. I mean, I know that's racially, like, blanketing things, being a dumb, dumbass white person, but at least I, I, knew, I looked at them and realized that there's enough of a difference that they are obviously not Muslim. And honestly, I hate to be really shallow or whatever, but half the reason why I know the difference between them and Muslims is because Muslims look like dirty, dirty sand niggers. I don't care if I say the N-word, because I'd never say that to a black person. But I am totally taking that, the dust in the history books, and I am going to reinvent it for Muslims. Sand niggers, I don't care. Because they're fucking assholes, and I may sound like I'm blanketing and being racist again, Islamophobic, but you would think that maybe since I actually know the difference between Sikhs and whatnot, and because I've been showing all this different sources from the Quran, from Mohammed's biography, from their uh, sociological institutions, cultural norms, Muslims that wish they could get out of the culture because they were born into it, especially most women that are crying for help on YouTube, then, you know, the women that were lucky and for some reason they had a husband or a father who actually didn't mind signing and saying that they're allowed to go to school and they decided to go to school and pursue a secondary education and they, you know, they get a master's or a PhD in psychology or sociology which 
there is one specific lady who was born into the Muslim culture that did that. And now she is an activist to stop Islam and to educate people on Islam. But because of people like this person, for example, that instantly jumps to, I'm being racist because I'm not being accepting because she's having problems projecting the fact that she's white and she, at some point before she, everybody started giving a shit about the other parts of the, the globe, you know, the third world or people suffering or whatever, or before we were, we had that reality check because we can actually see it now instead of just, you know, pretending that it's not there anymore, that we feel like we need to be fucking Mother Teresa. And the problem is, is that that's, ki that's cool. If you want to be Mother Teresa, that's cool. Like, for example, the reason why I'm making this video, Sikhs are cool. I've never had a problem with Sikhs. I've met a couple. Like I said, I didn't know exactly what they were all about, but I could tell because they actually look clean. And their turban actually looks really nice, and they usually have like a little beadwork or something on it. I thought it was pretty cool. And they've always seemed fairly nice to me, and apparently I get Hindus mixed up with Sikhs, because I, I asked my boyfriend, I was like, are those like the really nice people that run 7-Elevens? And he says, no, they're they're usually higher class than that. But regardless, I, I kind of knew the gist of it, and I don't have a problem with them. I also have no problem with black people either. I, I have no problem with African Americans. I'm having a little bit of a problem with Native Africans, especially Northern, because they're associated with the Muslim shit. Like that little African refugee boy that kicked that girl's face in, that 12 year old girl's face in, about a month ago, because he is in the foster care program for the refugee resettlement, and because he's under 18 he gets enrolled in the school system, and he said he liked that girl and he kept following her around, and he said I want you to be my girlfriend, and she said no, so he said he was going to kick her face in, and he did, and he had to, apparently there had to be like three or four teachers to pull him off of her, because he continued to kick her face in until he was physically restrained because a 12 year old girl says she did not want to date him which good for fucking her nice mannered girl that's completely traumatized because she had the right to say no and the kid who came from the Muslim culture he's been brought up into or he's been adopted into has taught him that women have no rights, no say, and if they say anything against a man, that they're physically allowed to maul them or beat them up. And just think they weren't even dating or anything like that. It was just because she happened to be a female and, he, and she said no. It's freaking ridiculous. That's just the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's coming into the country. So this is, that's also the whole point that I'm getting at with that specific person who started saying that I'm just a racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic, whatever. No, I'm not. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go over, now that I ranted for 10 minutes, sorry, about some just, some basic information with Sikhs. Okay, so I have a Wikipedia here. I found some other sites, but honestly, I'm just gonna go with Wikipedia because a lot of these ter terms I'm not familiar with, and I'm not gonna go through the tedious process to click on all of them, when probably almost everyone who watches this isn't even gonna remember or digest any of the fucking terminology I used. So, says that Sikh is a follower of Sikhism. It's a monotheistic dharma. There we go. Which originated during the 15th century in India. Fucked of any human being who faithfully believes in one immortal being. And I just see a bunch of gurus with names. And I'm assuming that's where the whole concept of guru came from. That was kind of became a trend with the West and people trying to... Yeah, well, I'm talking about like those hippie people that... Like Alan Watts wannabes okay, yeah. that are over here that try to like make a business out of that shit. So it says he he who is called a Sikh of the Sat Guru wakes up in the morning, meditates in the Nam of Nam of the Lord. He makes efforts to rise in the early morning and bathes in a pool of nectar. He repents. Uh, he repeats the teachings of his master and and all his anxieties and sins are washed away. He sings the the Beni, which is word of the master, as the day rises. Sitting or standing, he meditates to the Nam of the Lord. So this is like the Eastern version of of worshiping the sun god, right, Boo? Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's the Eastern philosophy view of God, which is more complete, more complex than most Western. Wanting to say that they're like Hindus, but apparently I googled that too, and they're nothing like Hindus. They they don't hate each other, but they're not on very good terms. 
But for one thing that I am sure of that I googled and I've seen, Sikhs and Muslims hate each other. Obviously Muslims hate everybody. But Sikhs have been going at it apparently through wars. I'm guessing since the 15th century is when it started up. They've probably been going at it since then because Muslims never quit. <laughs> so, it says, Sikh included in the U.S. Census as well, arguing that Sikhs self-identity as an ethnic minority and believe that they are more than just a religion. And then it says, male Sikhs have a, a Singha, a lion, and a female Sikhs have a Qr princess and this, as their middle name or last name. They've undergone... Oh, God, I'm not even going to try to say that word. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> May also be recognized as the 5KS Kesh uncut hair, with, which is kept uncovered, usually by a turban to protect the Dazam Duar, the godhead, an iron or steel bracelet. So um, I'll show you this little clip that I did to help you remember that the blue turbans are the cool guys. They're the peace guys. <laughs> with Genie from Aladdin. I know that sounds really childish, but I tried to, you know, find the the analogy or, you know, comparison for dummies as far as I could with American pop culture. So if you think of Genie from Aladdin, he's a big, you know, nice, sweet teddy bear, cares about cares about whoever else in the movie. He has those little bracelets on his wrist. And Sikhs usually have a very muscular built, or they are just thick boned. And they're very nice and me and my boyfriend were talking about this and he's like, Well, I'm trying to think of what what they're kinda like and I'm like, they're like the the eastern teddy bears. That's what I call them. Well, until that well, that should be everybody, because that's human instinct. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole Crusades thing, too, that everybody's giving us fucking shit for, for, for white, white privilege guilt shit. And all I have to say is, fuck all of you, because if, unless you're Muslim, if it wasn't for the goddamn Crusaders, as much as you hate the white people, your ass would be grass. <sighs> and it probably had the plague on it, too, because there'd be Muslims standing over it, and they don't wash their hands. Reference a... A uh, news article that recently just came out actually from USA News, usnews.com, seeks becoming a casualty of anti-Muslim actions. Hostility, fear, and ignorance put religious minorities of, at all kinds of risk. I did make a sarcastic comment because I'm kind of in that mood today that first off he, he lives in Dallas so he's kind of asking for it. I'm not trying to be an asshole here but I mean if somebody's going to start pulling the racist card out on me I might as well just start making fun of the other, other factions of white people and people from Texas I totally respect the fact that they can barbecue and they take no prisoners but goddamn they need to you know read a little bit on some multiculturalism every once in a while 2013 a group of about 20 men in Central Park saw Sink and his brother out on a walk and came to a single conclusion when they shouted the accomplished doctor and academic as a terrorist they attack Sink and fractured his jaw, all because they apparently thought he was a Muslim. And while Muslims and Sikhs practice different religions and come from different cultures, Sink is more concerned about what he sees as frightening commonality in the two faiths and increasingly emboldened hatred fueled by the fear of terrorism and ignorance by religious tenets. Okay, so I'm not going to go further into that, but basically what I'm getting at is that there is a distinctive difference visually from Sikhs to Muslims. Also, just in mannerisms in general, because even when Muslims are pulling jihad shit or takya or trying to, you know, play nice like the Mecca version of Muslims, you can still, I don't know if it's just because I'm really into psychology, but you can still see some animosity beneath them. You can tell they're faking it. With Muslims, they just have this, and I feel like I'm projecting with that, so I guess I'm going to make that comment. They just have this sort of arrogance about them that they think they're just better than you that they have that mentality within them regardless of how well they like to act unless they're really good actors but you know I don't know how many of them would quote unquote fit all the the 
astro-psychological criteria for psychopathy, but since their culture itself is the epitome of psychopathy, I would assume, well, because psychopaths are supposed to be quote-unquote charming and be able to manipulate people, which that's pretty much what their entire Quran book uh, validates, so maybe they can act a little more, but at least I know with women for sure, they're catty little bitches, and it, I don't know if I'm just really good at at um, antagonizing people, but if I'm ever around like a, a male person, a man, that I can tell has some sort of like sexist animosity towards me regardless of his race or whatever, I, I just, I know exactly what to say and how to word stuff just to get under their skin, and I can just see them seething like underneath just trying to restrain themselves, and like I said, I don't know if it's just because I can play mind games with people like that, but I can tell the difference. And they have this, and just speaking, I guess, again, from projecting, when you are really aggressive and angry deep down, you carry that kind of demeanor, even if you don't mean to. It's like the whole concept with like a Scorpio rising thing. And it's like, but with, with Sikhs, I've never really felt that unless they thought I was being racist or being a bitch, which is completely possible, but I've never felt, I've never felt tension from just being in like the same room with a Sikh or a Hindu, I guess I've probably gotten them confused before with whatever, but with Muslims, I, I, I haven't really met that many, but obviously I've been watching a lot of YouTube footage and them talking and different, you know, ex-Muslims and talking about things and like the ex-Muslims of North America is another good organization and just the way that they describe everything and and even if you don't have any eyewitness accounts just go read Muhammad's fucking biography but anyway I had a couple tabs open what else I did that one. Oh yeah so I was gonna read this off because it's an actual it says barenakedislam.com and it's supposed to be a post uh, showing you the distinct difference of headgear between Sikhs and Muslims. And I already showed you a couple clips of what Sikhs look like. And it's still wasting my time reading this crap because as far as I'm concerned, and this is going to sound really rude and I honestly I mean it exactly the way it sounds. Muslim headdress look like wet dirty towels that were wrapped by, you know, a a, a Down Syndrome blind toddler trying to wrap somebody's head and cover it with a sheet. Even the ones that seem to look like they're the nicer ones, you know, the, I don't know what the fuck they call themselves, but the, the people that are really important. They still look like they have a dirty goodwill sheet on their fucking head. Which totally explains why they're responsible for the damn plague. Which will probably come and get America again too. Because since of healthcare is no longer affordable. And we have this generation of fucking sheltered idiots. That are liberals actually. That decide to have killed kids, children. And don't give them vaccines. They. Probably not them specifically. I don't know. It depends on how well their immune system is. But most of them probably being vegetarians. Or being you know, health conscious or whatever. Let's hope. Unless they're just hypocritical idiots, which I, I'm sure that's the case. Their kids will die, their kids will get sick, their kids will die, and maybe their kids will infect them and they'll die too. And then we'll just take care of half the population issue. And then I won't have to worry about liberal fucks standing in my way about me keeping my fucking Second Amendment self-defense for when either the government or the police don't give a fuck to do anything, because I'll tell you that, in the area that I live in, they don't give a fuck about helping you, about anything. It's their quotas, their speeding tickets, thinking that I'm stoned, driving a jack-in-the-box, that's all they care about. Uh, it, if, it, if I ever came down to a point where I actually had a physical threat, if I did not have a firearm of my own, I would be fucking dead. And fuck you guys if you can take that away from me. If you don't want to have a gun, that's cool. But don't take it from me. And if you think for one fucking second disarming me is going to stop all of the goddamn cartels coming over the border that's wide open that you don't give a fuck about putting a goddamn fence up or a wall up 
is going to stop just bringing in illegal black market guns that get sent from our own government to them. You're fucking delusional. And that's and that's actually if you look at the statistics with Australia when they had their their you know right to bear arms revoked, there's some interesting statistics with that. Crime went up, especially home invasions because if they know for sure that nobody has a gun in a home, all they have to worry about is physically fighting off someone and or if they already have a weapon of their own because they can get through the black market or, you know, over the Mexican border, then they can just come in and shoot people, take no prisoners, and just take the whole house. So, that's all I gotta say. At this point, I hope whatever diseases that come, you wanna go volunteer at one of those refugee shelters, if you die and your your kids catch something and you die and they die, I'm not going to say I hope that you die, but I do not feel bad for you. This was totally supposed to be more of an educational thing than a bitch rant thing, but I've just been on one of those today. So I'm just going to show the stupid clip of the sand niggers sheets on their, their heads and I'm calling it a do because this is... I was trying to not be offend. No, you know what? It's because I'm trying. I'm being so non-offensive in those very informative, unbiased videos that I just had to get all the bitch shit out. Now I got all the bitch shit out, and I can pretend to be nice again. <laughs>